Why did the princess touch the hole? Did that lady suddenly become such a beautiful god? Let's find out. In the realm of the sun goddess, there was a good princess named Sunny, who was the only daughter of the king and the late queen. She always wore the royal necklace, a family heirloom, with the hope that she would become a great queen as she had wished. However, no matter how hard she tried to be strong, her father always thought that she was just a weak girl and left the heavy work for the wizard general. Moreover, the successor of the kingdom was often a wise, consensuous man who could possess the scepter of light, which a part of the power of the sun goddess's heart to maintain the light of the kingdom. So the king thought a lot and went to the temple without letting Sunny go. I understand my father is worried about me and my people, so he cannot assume the responsibility of carrying this kingdom to me. And if I let the wizard general in charge, he must be the guy who my father trusted a lot, and I will try to support him. While Sunny was thinking, she suddenly heard a loud noise coming from the temple. And the sky suddenly darkened for no reason. When she arrived, she saw her father and the wizard general, who was asleep. And the goddess got angry and left. What happened to my father and the sun goddess? Because the king wanted you to be his successor. So the sun goddess didn't agree and got angry like that. The king always silently observed your efforts and decided to propose you to be the one who ruled the scepter of light in order to maintain the prosperity of the kingdom. However, the Sun Goddess was very angry because she thought that you was a girl, not in accordance with the old custom. So the Goddess punished your father, destroyed the Scepter of Light, and took away the life of our kingdom. If you want to save the king and kingdom, you must find the Sun Goddess at the top of the Perilous Mountain and bring back the Scepter of Light. As it turns out, my father always been quietly sacrificed for me, so I'm going to go see the goddess and prove my true strength, and I'm determined not to let you regret this decision. After saying that, Sunny decided to go on the road, trying to overcome all the obstacles to reach the top of the mountain, the place where the sun goddess was supposed to reside. While climbing the mountain, she saw a fox fainted on the road from starvation due to the scarcity of food from the disappearance of the sun. Seeing the poor fox, Sunny rushed to get some of her food to help him stay awake. Appreciating Sunny's kindness, the fox immediately brought her to the front of the huge gate, the residence of the sun goddess. You must be here to see the sun goddess. However, if you want to meet the goddess, you must answer my wise question first. Yes, please, ask the question. You're a brave little girl. So answer me, all things on earth are like animals. People always try to avoid conflict and fight to maintain a peaceful life. However, what alive will beat, what doesn't beat will die. Sunny hmm? thought for a while but hmm. could not think of an answer and unconsciously she touched her heirloom <gasps> softly. <laughs> that's right, the answer is the heart because that's the source of life for every species. If it doesn't beat every second, it can't survive. That's exactly right. <laughs> In word, the gate showed the way for Sunny, but when Sunny had just set foot hmm. inside, she was suddenly attacked by the sun goddess in anger. Without saying an explanation, Sunny tried her best to evade the goddess's magic, but is still defeated. While Sunny was cornered, she saw the goddess holding her chest, which seemed very painful. As it turned out, she realized that the goddess had lost a part of her heart. So she tried to run so fast that she put her necklace in the void on the goddess's chest and held her in her lap. Feeling Sunny's heart through hugs and gifts, the goddess gradually calmed down and returned to the beauty form as before. <laughs> Thank you, Princess Sunny. You helped me recover my strength with love. And in the last journey, I've also known how good and strong you are. Will you then not be angry with me and help my father recover and bring light to all things in my kingdom? I'm sorry. It's not because of you that I got angry and turned dark like this. However, I want you to learn what the truly good people are and to find out the reason behind this and defeat that evil force to help people. Therefore, even though I am weak now, I will grant you the scepter of light, which will help you to obtain the ultimate magic. Hmm. 
However, if you use the power of the scepter to save your father's life, you will have no more magic to save the people and vice versa. Hmm. Standing in front of the great and difficult mm -hmm. decisions of life, Sunny contemplated and thought, hypnotized along the way back to the kingdom. It's difficult to make the decision to choose either one, as the sun goddess says, because for me, dad are the only one who has raised me. Therefore, I cannot afford to watch my father weaken and pass away. Only I also understand that when there is a lack of sunlight, all things in the kingdom live in misery. Even their food is increasingly scarce and robbed by soldiers. <coughs> Seeing the unusual happen in front of her eyes, Sunny hurried back to the palace, but had just arrived at the place where the wizard general blocked the road to arrest and seize the scepter. <laughs> it's worth for me to wait. Just in a short time, you brought back the scepter of light. It turned out that long ago, the king knew that even though the wizard general was an agile guy, but evil-minded person, quietly sucking up the wealth of the people so the king could not bring him to the throne. So when the king achieved Sunny as his successor, the wizard general was furious and sought to defeat the king to seize the scepter of light, while the sun goddess needed absolute concentration to recharge the scepter light with magical energy and also the weakest defense, the wizard general silently intended to take the scepter from the goddess. However, when the wizard general touched the scepter, his evil grip directly affected and infected the evil with weapons and even the heart of the goddess was darkened. Seeing that scene, the king hurriedly stopped the wizard, but during the contraction, the scepter was broken as well, as the king was seriously wounded. Turns out you're the one behind all this? My father and I have trusted you all this time! It's too late now, princess. Now that I have the scepter of light in my hands, you must all submit to my command. <laughs> After that, he used the scepter to create a lot of sun throughout the kingdom with the intention of making people work all day long to redeem it. No, I can't make his ambitions come true. I must continue to fight for the people, for my father. Sunny tried to move away from the soldiers. The wizard general panicked using the scepter to stop Sun, but suddenly, the sun in Sunny's hand shone and dazzled him. Not only that, the magic that he just shot at her was flushed back and caused him to melt into a cloud of smoke. However, the power of the sun was too strong to Sunny, so she was forced to hold the sun in her hands to create pressure, causing them to break. But this was equivalent to, she had to sacrifice her life. Because my father and people, I determined to sacrifice myself to become the light of the sun and to leave the scepter of light to my father so that they may all live together in peace. Finally, Sunny hugged the sun in her heart, shone brightly in front of many people. While everyone was mourning her departure, a light suddenly shone from the ashes, and Sunny appeared as a light bearer. <gasps> Sunny! Daddy! <laughs> Sunny, I know you're just a little girl, mm. but you've proven in your journey and sacrifice is that you're a person mm. of both mind and vision, and fit for the scepter of light. Mm. Therefore, I hope you will maintain the prosperity of the kingdom on my behalf. Thank you, Dad, and everybody so much. I also understand that whatever our origin or gender is, if we try hmm. hard enough and take action, everyone will understand what our potential is. And then, under Sunny's guidance, the kingdom once again returned to its inherent serenity, and people lived happily ever after. <laughs> The story happened in a city where there was a prince made of gold standing in the middle of the square. He always smiled, so everyone called him the Happy Prince. Huh? Mom, why do people call him the Happy Prince? 
Do you see that? The prince is always smiling. There is nothing in this world that can make him sad. So that's why he is given that name. <laughs> the prince was always standing there from day to day, year to year, and had become the symbol of this city. One night, while on the way flying to the south when it was raining, there was a little sparrow perched under the statue to avoid the rain. She was standing there and thinking about the warmth of the south side. Just one more day, then I will be able to enjoy the warmth of the south side, and these frozen nights won't be my nightmares anymore. Suddenly, a drop of water fell from the sky. She thought that the statue leaked somewhere, so she stood in another place. But no, there was another drop of water, then another one dropped on her head. She moved up and surprised at what she was seeing. In front of her was the happy prince. Although he was smiling, there were drops of water running on his cheek. Hello, beautiful sparrow. I'm the happy prince. Hello! Nice to meet you. I see that everyone calls you the Happy Prince, but why are you crying? That's right. I used to be a Happy Prince when I was alive. I lived in the Sans Souci Palace, where sadness can never reach. I just lived my happy life there. But when I died, they put my statue here. Being in the highest place of the city, I realized that there are so many miserable lives that can't make me happy. And even if my heart is made of lead, I can't stop being sympathetic with them. The bird listened attentively and seemed like she was really understanding what the prince was going through. Aren't you made of gold? Why is your heart made of lead? That's the truth of this world. Not everything is as flashy as it looks. That's the lesson I've learned since I became a statue. My body is only overlaid with gold. So, what can I help you with? Thank you a lot, Sparrow. I want to help those who are having troubles out there. Can you help me do that? Okay, I'm very pleased, but how can I help them? On my sword hilt, there is an emerald. Please take it and give it to a tailor on the other side of the city. She is having to work so hard to make ends meet, and her son is very sick. He wants a glass of orange juice. Maybe this gem will help him through this stage. The bird agreed, although she had only one day to stay there, or else she would be frozen. But the mercy heart didn't allow her to ignore the poor people. After a long flight, the sparrow managed to reach the tailor's house. She saw the tailor was too tired, lying next to the sewing machine while her son was sleeping. The bird put the gem on the table, then left. When returned, the bird told the story to the prince. The tailor would be very happy when she wakes up. So lucky to have you here, little bird. I really don't want to witness these hurtful moments. You're welcome, but I can help you only today. Tomorrow I will have to fly to the south, where my friends are waiting to avoid the cold. It's okay. Can you help me bring these two diamonds in my eyes to help huh? some people? No, it can't be. You will lose your eyes and won't be able to see anything. This is my last will. Why do I have to keep these eyes instead of using them to help other people? Can you help me, please? Okay, I will help you, you warm-hearted prince. <gasps> then, the bird brought one gem from the prince to a young man who was trying to finish the script to earn money in an attic without huh? windows and stoves. He was about to faint because <laughs> of the cold and hunger. <laughs> Eventually, despite being heartbreaking, she had to bring the other gem to a child who was selling matches. She lost all of them in the drain, and she was crying in the cold of winter. Thank you! Thank you a lot! Warm-hearted prince, why do I feel so warm, although it is cold? Because you have done good deeds, your heart won't be surrounded by the cold anymore. Just like me. Even when I lost my eyes, I can still see your kindness. The two people kept talking until the next day. Then the bird had to say goodbye, although she didn't want to. I have to leave now. The warmth is waiting for me there. Goodbye, kind prince. I wish you all the best things in life. Goodbye, little sparrow. Thank you for everything. May God be with you. 
she flew away all over the city. She looked down, seeing the miserable lives in every corner of the city, and that moment her heart was squeezing. And she thought about the prince when he smiled very brightly despite losing his eyes. She couldn't leave him alone, so she returned. Hello, happy prince. I flew away, but when I saw the poor lives, I recollected the image of a kind prince, so I decided to return. Huh? Why do you return? You won't be able to resist the cold here. Please leave. The warmth in the south is waiting for you. No, never. Didn't you say that when the heart is warm, you won't feel the cold anymore? Hmm? The prince sadly thought for a while. Then he decided to ask the bird to help him one last time. So, can you help me one last time? There are gold foils on my body, and you can see that there are miserable lives out there. Please help me bring them to those people, and return here when you're finished. The bird agreed to do that. She brought the golden leaves on his body to the beggars, homeless people in the city, hoping that they will have a better life. When she returned, because of flying too long and the frozen cold of the winter, she could only say a few last words to the prince. Happy prince, you are the kindest person I have ever met. I love you. Then she kissed on his lips and died under the statue. Once again, the statue shed a tear. And inside his heart, it started to break. The next day, the officers in the city were very surprised to see the statue was in bad condition, under which was a dead sparrow. Why did the happy prince become so pathetic? There must be someone who ruined it. There's even a dead bird under the statue. What a bad day. Yes, we have to move the statue. Now it looks like the prince is a beggar. They moved the statue and burned it. Strangely, his heart didn't melt at all, but there was a huge scratch. They threw his heart away. Next to him was the sparrow's body. In the corner of the city, two angels witnessed everything. They came to there. They were sent by God to bring to heaven these two most precious things of the city. You two go to that city and bring me the two most precious things of it. Yes, sir. The two had been flying around the city all day. They finally saw the kind hearts of the prince and the sparrow, then brought it back to God. God, these are the two warmest hearts, hmm. as well as the two most valuable things we have found in the city. Well done. I saw everything, and these are indeed two most valuable things of the city. They are one of a kind so they deserve an eternal life. I will give them another life in my golden city. Yes, yes sir. sir! Since then, the prince and the sparrow lived happily forever in God's golden city. Once upon a time, there was a smart king and a lovely queen who lived happily together and ruled their kingdom in prosperity and peace. Things seemed perfect, but no. They were told to be about 50, but still had no child at all. They looked for many physicians, doctors, tried their best, but no one could help. One day, our queen was walking by a stream. She saw a unicorn whose leg was stuck between some heavy rocks. She tried to help him out. To repay for her help, the unicorn granted her a wish. Of course, she wished for a baby. My sincere thanks to you, my queen. I shall grant you a wish for your kind heart. Please think about your desire and tell me. Oh, thank you. I wish for a healthy, smart, and brave child to join our family. Not a long time after that event, a pretty princess said hello to this world with her strong voice in the delight of the whole kingdom. Hello, my princess! Long live, Long live my, my king! Queen. Congratulations! 
Both the king and the queen felt excited and happy that after all their effort, a little princess was given birth. They named her Selina, after the moon god. Selina grew with beauty, but unlike any other girls, she didn't like cooking or embroidery. She had a spirit of a soldier who enjoyed her life in daily military training. She gradually became a skilled warrior. Her direct teacher was Captain Roger. He was the loyal general of the kingdom, and also the one who gave command to the kingdom's army. They gradually had feelings for each other. Suddenly, a catastrophe came from nowhere. The king got informed that the intruders from their neighbors were spotted. They were gathering and about to conquer this beautiful land. Your Majesty, according to our credible intelligence, they will set their first strike soon. Due to our situation of lacking skillful soldiers, we are not going to win this battle. We need a more specific and effective plan. The king was in bad health, so he couldn't do anything to struggle against the intruders. The best and the only way was to borrow troops from the other neighbor, Monaco. However, the way to the place was very dangerous. I know. You are talking about borrowing troops from Monaco, right? This is an excellent idea. I'm afraid, if we made it around the mountain, it shall not be enough time for us to get back. And... and... crossing through the mountain is too dangerous, you know. That dragon! Your Majesty, my word is to protect you and this kingdom to the end of my life. Huh? Princess Selina heard every word that they discussed. In order to reach Monaco, she would have to cross a volcano which had a deadly dragon. Many people had lost their life there when they tried to cross it. Hmm? However, Princess Selina was still determined to help her kingdom. Father, if you need, I will be volunteered to do negotiation with them. Anyway, you all knew about my fighting capability. I can protect myself. It's my confidence to cross the mountain by myself. More men, more burden. Oh, Selina, you grew up, but... Father, I want to get ready by now. Then I will go tomorrow morning. This cannot be waited. Please allow me. All right. The responsibility is on your shoulders. We will prepare everything for your trip. Roger, your duty is to give command to our soldiers and plan the best defensive method with everything we had. Huh? Your Majesty, our Princess, I wish for being her partner on the trip. Negative. <gasps> what if they got into our castle when none of us were here? Who have enough capability to fight back? Who will protect my parents? General <gasps> Roger, please, stay with your word. Stay here. The only one who can protect this place is you. I'm counting on you. Copy that. You have my word. Take care of yourself, my lady. Selina prepared a warhorse, wearing a sharp sword and firm armor. She began the adventure after saying goodbye to her beloved. The adventure was quite harsh. Selina needed to get through a giant thorn forest, a swamp full of crocodiles, and a jungle full of predators. As she was told before, Selina met a dragon on the way to the volcano. The dragon spat a fireball at her. Selina quickly dodged the attack. This is not so good. I have no chance against the dragon. I need a perfect strategy. Go, let's hide first. Her strategy was to sneak after the dragon, spot the nest, and wait till a ripe opportunity came. Not long after, Selina spotted a little dragon walking out of the cave carelessly. The little one played with flowers and tried to catch a butterfly. Because of her carelessness, she fell off the ground. Our princess noticed that the little dragon had injured her leg. Seeing that, Selina immediately thought of a way to approach and persuade the dragon inside the cave. As what Selina had observed from the little dragon, she picked up a beautiful flower bouquet and brought it to the cave. Hello, I'm Selina. I came here without any hostile idea, just to have conversations. I saw that your little baby got injured, and I think I can help her with that. How can I believe someone who wearing those sharp things without any hostile idea? 
I will leave them here. Is that all? The dragon was confused at first, till she saw Selina come in without any metallic stuff. She decided not to cover herself in darkness anymore, and slowly walked out from the shadow. Her body revealed looked like a big castle. Selina walked in slowly. She gave the bouquet to the dragons, and tried to bandage the injury on the baby dragon's leg. With gentle hand gestures, the baby dragon couldn't feel any pain at all. <laughs> The whole performance and attitude made the big dragon gradually feel her sincerity. That night, Selina shared her own life stories with the dragon family. Selina felt that the mother dragon could sympathize with her without any clue. Selina, I can feel your braveness and kind heart through my dragon eyes. I can fly you to Monaco, but it's annoying. I don't want to. There used to be many people like you came here, but none of them had goodwill. They just want to slay me down for the title of Dragon Slayer. I can easily bury those arrogant in my flame, but I didn't. You know, killing only brings hostile, and that would threaten my baby's safety. So that's it. Anyway, could you please help me to explain that I, Fiona, have no hostel with you, human? I just want to live peacefully. Please, don't disturb my life. That's all. I promise, as my behalf of a princess. Then from now on, you are considered to be my first friend. Next morning, Selina was going to leave the cave to Monaco. Fiona stopped her, put a magic whistle in her hand. Selina, I sensed your adventures still have some trouble. This is a magical whistle. I have considered <laughs> you as my friend, then I will protect you. As soon as you use it, it means you're in trouble. The sound from this magical whistle could bring the message to me, and I will find you anywhere, anytime. <laughs> After she got to Monaco Ooh. successfully, Selina met the king and expressed her wish to ask for troops to rescue her kingdom. The king not only refused her request, but also claimed a chance to conquer Selina's kingdom. Great, great! Your kingdom now needs my help, huh? What if I say no? Ha <laughs> ha! Isn't it my chance to take your kingdom? Ha ha ha! You're so naive. <laughs> The king gave order to have Selina tied and locked in a tower that she couldn't escape. Their soldiers were gathered, preparing to conquer Selina's kingdom. There was no other way. Selina had to use the whistle. Just minutes later, Fiona appeared in the sky and made all of Monaco's soldiers astonished. Some ran away, some hid behind walls, some with courage tried to fight back. However, human weapons could not make a scratch on dragon skin. Fiona destroyed the tower and rescued Selina. Then she used her flamethrower on Monaco's soldiers. Before the immortal power of Fiona, Monaco had to surrender. Selina locked Monaco's king into jail and persuaded Monaco's soldiers to help her kingdom. When Selina rode on Fiona's back to her kingdom, she could see her country covered in smoke and wreckage. Oh no, please, I hope it's not too late. Her parents and Roger were surrounded. Almost all of the soldiers retreated or surrendered. It was just Roger still standing for his majesty. Fiona threw some fireballs to disperse the dangerous situation. Selina commanded Monaco's soldiers to fight the enemy. Their strength was enough to beat them. Finally, the enemy retreated and never came back because they knew that they could never beat Selina. <laughs> Selina went back to the palace in her parents' amazed attitude. They couldn't believe that their beloved daughter was the one who saved the whole kingdom. Selina thanked Roger for being still alive till she came back. Thank you so much. Hmm. You are still standing for my beloved father and mother. Oh, it's my duty. You don't have to say thanks. Roger, it's our honor to have a brave, <laughs> indomitable, and reliable person like you at our side. Huh? Aren't you still single? Huh? What do you think about our daughter, Selina? Your Majesty, this... this... I will not decline your suggestion. Father, I... I totally agree with it. 
Speaking of Fiona, she and her children then had a better life than ever. No one was allowed to come to disturb Fiona. Let's watch the more exciting adventures of Selena and Fiona in the next episode of Woa Fairy Tales.